Want to see our videos three days early, gain previews to newer ones, or have the ability to vote on our next video and its topic? Consider supporting us on Patreon to further grow this channel and the community. Jon Snow is one of the most beloved characters in Game of Thrones, and his character can fit pretty well into a D&D &D campaign. Today, I'll be showing you how to do that in the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons. Just to let you guys know that these are just guidelines. I'd recommend giving your character a different name, or making some alterations to the backstory than what I necessarily give you. Unless you're a really hardcore Jon Snow fan, then go ahead and use everything I give you for a true bastard experience. Also, spoiler alert for those who haven't finished Season 7. I'm ready. I won't let you down. We'll be making John at level 1. Don't worry, I'll show you what he's capable of later in levels, but for now we'll be staying right here, where most campaigns start. His race is human, as is pretty much every race in Game of Thrones, but if you want to add a little bit more flavor, John also fits half-elf pretty well. <laughs> His alignment sits between lawful good and neutral good. His character has definitely gone through some change throughout the series, but he always sticks to his honor and his word. So we'll stick him with lawful good. Now many of you may think John is a ranger due to his title given in the show. You're allowed to look happy. He's going to be a ranger. But when I go to look at Ranger, it doesn't seem to fit him all that well. Rangers are natural explorers and cannot become lost. They know how to track and hunt and cast magical spells. Now, magic is pretty rare in Game of Thrones, and if we're sticking purely to the show's version of Jon, he never shows any ability of warging or magical abilities, other than the whole coming back to life thing, which wasn't his doing. More like a cleric casting resurrection. John has also gotten lost, he's not very quick, and he's never shown much promise to tracking. The only thing running for him being a ranger is Ghost, but really Ghost is much more of a protective pet than a companion that John can control and use in battle. Ghost is likely an animal friend the DM gave to John for his noble heritage. You're no ranger, John. But I'm better than every You're other- Better than no one! If you want to play John as a ranger, by all means go ahead, but in my opinion, John fits fighter much better. He's very good at fighting, he's shown to power through fights, to have a second wind, and to defeat his enemies with many attacks. In later levels, he also fits the commanding prowess of a battle master. Let's mark down that John is a fighter at level 1, and for your fighting style, take dueling, since John necessarily only uses long claw as his main weapon, he's pretty good at dealing damage with it, and tends to only use that instead of any shields or double weapons or range. At third level, you will gain your martial archetype. For John, choose Battlemaster. John thinks a lot in tactics when it comes to the battlefield, and you can customize him much more in this subclass. When choosing your maneuvers, pick Commander Strike, Precision Attack, and Riposte. John is all about swordplay and is very skilled in dueling. These abilities will help you a lot when fighting one on one with other enemies, while also allowing you to team up with your party. John has always been physically fit, he's been training for nearly his whole life, and he's a natural in his fighting abilities. If you're using standard array, put your 15 in strength, that way you can be really good at fighting, and your 14 into dexterity. Fighters have more versatility when having a higher strength, plus John seems to be a bit more brutish than graceful. Put your 13 into constitution. John has braved cold weathers and tough battles, coming on top every time. We'll get into this ability later, but for now keep it at 13. 12 in Wisdom. John has a relatively good perception. Fire. There's a fire. People sitting around it have better eyes than yours or mine. His insight seems to fail him often, however, but an average score is needed for just his skills. 10 in Charisma. John is not a born leader, but he doesn't seem to be bad at it. All those hard sons of bitches chose him as their leader because they believe in him. The people who love him do so because of his heroic actions, not his words. Someone like Tyrion would have a much higher charisma. He's able to convince others with only his words. Jon persuades with his actions. Any other time when attempting diplomacy, he isn't the greatest at it. Would you please shut up? Would you please shut up? John grew up not reading books, studying, or having a know-how to anything. He's constantly in the dark about what is happening around him, and takes others' words as fact often more times than not. But how? Well, my brother has his sword, and I have my mind, 
and the mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. That's why I read so much Jon Snow. Unfortunately, this is where Jon falls short in intelligence. Someone like Sam is much more intelligent than Jon, but Sam falls short in pretty much every other skill. It seems to be why they make a good team. Put your final eight in this score and remember, You know nothing, Jon Snow. If your DM allows it, use the human variant. Add plus one to your strength, plus one to your constitution, and take the tough feat. John is quite tough and has braved many dangers. His hit points are likely pretty high, so take the feat to increase his survivability in battles. For John's skills, take animal handling and survival. For John's background, many would think to put Noble or Urchin, due to his bastard-like childhood of being raised by the Starks. However, I think Soldier fits him much more. John never sat with his family at dinners and had an ache to join the Night's Watch due to his skill in fighting. Lady Stark thought it might insult the royal family to see the bastard in their midst. Well, you're always welcome on the wall. No bastard was ever refused a seat there. So take me with you when you go back. John. Father will let me if you ask him. I know he will. He trained in many forms of combat and exceeds very well when he is with the Watch, so put him down for Soldier. Going through the Soldier background, you must pick what rank of Soldier you were. John was assigned to the Stewards before he became a Ranger, and we'll explain little bits to his background later. Mark him for Support Staff. You also gain the ability Military Rank. Work with your DM on how this ability can come into use. You also gain proficiency in athletics and intimidation. For personality trait, put I face problems head on. A simple, direct solution is the best path to success. John often goes headfirst into situations, never thinking much of the consequences. John! His feelings often get him in trouble and tend to amplify this. For example, when he let Egret live, then got lost beyond the wall. Do it! Or when Rickon died and he went charging into Ramsay's army. For ideal, put greater good. Our lot is to lay down our lives in defense of others. John is always sacrificial and he very much believes so with the Night's Watch, that they must always defend the world from those who oppose it. We see this when he saves the wildlings in favor of stopping the White Walkers. Everything John does is to oppose the walkers and he will always attempt to spare the living. This one is difficult. John fits nearly every bond. He would sacrifice himself for his people. His honor means everything to him. He'll never forget the walkers and even his newest friends are still worth dying for. Any one of these bonds fits him perfectly. For the sake of simplicity, I will choose I'll never forget the crushing defeat my company suffered or the enemies who dealt it. Because John's true motive is always to stop the walkers. He'll never forget Hardhum. The dead are coming for us all. Why don't you figure out what to do about my missing fleet and murdered allies? And I'll figure out what to do about your walking dead men. It's hard for me to fathom, it really is. If someone told me about the White Walkers and the Night King, When I was first picking his flaw, I thought the first one would fit due to his hatred for the walkers. However, it specifies fear. John might be afraid of the walkers, but not to the point of quivering and cowering whenever he sees them. He's seen over and over again fighting them to the death, so I wouldn't put that one. There's also this one, but as much as it may to seem fit, his hatred isn't unreasonable. He's lost many lives to the walkers and has seen their evil. His hatred isn't blind at all, he actually doesn't think anything of them until he sees their power. John much better fits, I obey the law even if the law causes misery. He didn't think much of this when he was younger, but now he's taken many traits of his adoptive father, Ned, and values his honor highly. John can't even lie to save the world from the walkers. His honor is just too high for him. I am true to my word, or I try to be. That is why I cannot give you what you ask. I cannot serve two queens, and I've already pledged myself to Queen Daenerys of House Targaryen. Last thing on our list is equipment. With starting equipment, choose B. Leather armor, longbow, and 20 arrows. 
John doesn't use a bow too often, but it's always a useful thing to have. Make your martial weapons a longsword, a lot like Longclaw, and a dagger, which is a simple weapon, but John doesn't really use any other kind of weapons, and it's always good to have a dagger. It also gives you two hand axes. John doesn't use hand axes, but if you want to use them, by all means. And an explorer's pack, which comes with a backpack, a bedroll, a mess kit, a tinderbox, 10 torches, 10 days of rations, and a water skin. I don't know why it gives you 10 torches. That's a lot of torches. You can survive with two. The pack also has 50 feet of hempen rope strapped to the side of it. Your background also provides you with an insignia of rank, a trophy taken from a fallen enemy. You can choose this to be a dagger, a broken blade, or a piece of banner. A set of bone dice or a deck of cards, a set of common clothes, and a pouch containing 10 gold pieces. Unless the campaign you're playing in is in Westeros, there's likely not a huge icy wall that your John has lived at. To best fit into the world you're playing in, we'll say John was a part of an outpost where he protected villagers from harm, when one day an incredible evil nearly killed all his men. They were able to escape, but just barely. Since then, John has been set to destroy this enemy to protect his people and the world. He must leave his post to stop this evil. My watch is ended. This plays into him being an adventurer and joining a party to defeat these enemies. This evil can be whatever bad guy the DM has set up for his game. If he doesn't have one, work with him to figure out what it could possibly be. If you're playing in Faerun or the Sword Coast with one of the pre-written adventures, make Jon a part of the faction called the Lord's Alliance. They are much like the North in Game of Thrones and can show up later in the campaigns. Examples of the enemy John must defeat for each game could be dragons for Tyranny of Dragons, drow or demons for Out of the Abyss, elementals for Princes of the Apocalypse, Strahd himself or undead in general for Curse of Strahd, giants for Storm King's Thunder, and undead for Tomb of Annihilation. In any case, John can easily fit into a D&D story with this kind of background. You can change it or alter it to however you want. Well, I hope this has given you some inspiration or a brand new character to play in your next D&D campaign. Have fun playing Jon Snow in your next adventures, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and support us on Patreon. Thanks.